Green Radar, highlighting all things green and sustainable. This week on Green Radar, the most important meal of the day takes center stage at Waterloo Primary School. Does your shampoo have an expiry date? When it's 100% all natural, it does. We talk to Javin Williams, CEO of Herbu Enterprises, about his eco-friendly organic shampoo that is literally good enough to eat. Pull out and dust off the old green thumbs. Learn to plant your own kitchen garden in our do-it-yourself section. All that plus the latest sustainable news and trends when we return after the break. What makes a child learn? Good teachers, diligent parents, educational technology? While all of the above are true, the answer is as simple as a good hearty breakfast in the mornings. We journeyed to Waterloo Primary School, nestled deep in the mountains of Northwest Manchester, where the Social Development Commission and the Ministry of Education have collaborated on a project to provide a sustainable solution to augment the most important meal of the day, breakfast. You have poor attendance. Children did not attend school regularly. And um, on investigation from class level, we realized that some students did not have breakfast before coming to school. You have certain kids come to school and they don't eat any breakfast, they like feel sick. We are from a poor social economic background, and some parents they just didn't have it. They wanted to give them a good breakfast, but they just didn't have it, so they just send them to school. And some of them live far away, so maybe getting up early in the mornings, they had to just run along to school, get ready and run to school. When children are hungry, they can't learn. So performance was not as we wanted it to be. So as a result of that, the Ministry of Education decided that in order to boost the attendance, that they would start a breakfast program. And that was done two years ago. But once they started the breakfast, that is the most important meal of the day, because sometimes we'll give them lunch, but up until 12 o'clock we'll have them looking dreary and sometimes they have tummy ache, sometimes they have people, children vomiting and so forth. And, and we would have to go to the canteen and give them like a cup of tea or something. This program is sustained by the community. The parents, they help along. At initially when we started the program, we invited parents to come out and to help with in preparing the breakfast and to bring what they had. Because this is a farming community, we have things like kalaloo, we have things like pak choy, we have things like banana and plantain that is used in the mornings. Once we had a farmer who gave us kalaloo almost for about a month. It was then that a plan was put into effect to expand the existing facilities, not only to feed the school, but the community as well. The Social Development Commission Corporate Office um, informed us that they have signed an MOU with the Ministry of Education to assist schools that are in need of assistance in the various parishes. And so Waterloo is one of the 11 schools that we are working with in the parish. Um, the officer was deployed and having dialogue with the principal and members of staff. I realized that they had a break, breakfast program up and running and I saw the need where they could have gotten some more assistance where in regards to that. We started to engage other stakeholders. So um, proposals were done to Food for the Poor and they came on board, they visited the school and uh, the parish manager along with the rest of the team from the SDC Manchester decided that they would build up a chicken coop for the school. The new facilities would provide that extra protein synonymous with breakfast, eggs. Well recently the SDC came on board and that they wanted to help in extending breakfast programs so they have volunteered to provide some layers, layers in the sense that the eggs will be used as a part of the breakfast. So today we are here um, building a chicken coop to give them 25 layers. Hopefully that will assist in them enhancing the breakfast program as well as generating income for the school. Persons have been coming out 
to assist in the whole building or the whole expansion of the chicken coop. They have also assisted in the fixing of the road and they have been here for two days and they have been quite supportive along with the member of staff as well. When we visited the Waterloo Primary School, construction was well underway with manpower provided by the SDC, community members and the students themselves. In the short time the breakfast program has been in effect, the teachers and students had only good to report. The impact that I saw on the students, because of the breakfast, they have been more punctual at school. They have been doing better. The reading has improved a lot because we do reading in the mornings and children are alert in the morning. Students' attendance has been boosted, punctuality has been boosted, and the performance in the Great World Literacy Test has Boosted. In fact, for the past two years, we have gotten averages over 80%, so that has been very good. Now, the parents, it has helped the parents tremendously because now parents don't necessarily have to give the students breakfast, they come to school for the breakfast. In fact, more than 90% of the students take part in the breakfast program. When I eat breakfast in the morning, I'm not hungry at all. It helps me to learn a lot more. Since the breakfast program come about, no more crying for belly ache. The, the students of the school, they're in a better position now to learn than before. The standard of work of the children has been exemplary to a point, and it's just forward movement for the school on a whole. And I think it will also help to assist the community itself, because with more educated students, we have an educated community, an educated part, an educated Jamaica. Before we made our journey back, we couldn't help but wonder what was next for Waterloo School. We have other stakeholders who are interested in the program, so we know that in the near future, maybe as early as next term, we'll have the breakfast program for the entire week. We noticed that there is a road coming up. The road was in a deplorable condition, so we decided to assist them in fixing the road so they can access the chicken, the chicken coops easily. SDC Manchester have written to Food for the Poor to ask for sanitary convenience for the Waterloo Primary because presently they are using pit latrines and we know that that is outdated. So Food for the Poor has granted that for them. So they will start construction shortly. So they will now have their flush, flush toilets, which will be safer for the children because we know that pit latrines can be dangerous. The, the persons who will be um, caring for the day-to-day the -day running of the, the coop will be the principal and some community persons along with the children because it's their project. So they will have to play a part in the maintenance of the project. We are hoping to start a kitchen garden for the school and that we will be Provided things like callaloo, carrot, pak soy of our own so that we will not have to solely depend on the members of the community for those things. Coming up. Javin Williams, CEO and founder of Herbal Enterprises, tells us about his eco-friendly herbal shampoo. Does your shampoo have an expiry date? This one does. It moisturizes and it leaves your hair smelling like mint candy and it's all natural. We spoke with Javin Williams, CEO of Herbal Enterprises, about this wonderful new eco-friendly sustainable product. Herbal Enterprise has been around for two years, or just under two years. Started out in 2012. Herbal is a herbal cosmetics company wherein we use plants or herbs just to manufacture our cosmetics, which are completely natural. Herbal is made for all ages, both sexes, male and female. And it's 100% safe, it's all natural. The baby can use, I would, I would advise you, you can introduce herbal shampoo to the baby just about one year old as the peppermint might be a little bit harsh. However, we can reduce that so that it doesn't affect their sensitive scalp. For our herbal shampoo, it's made from sorrel, rosemary, peppermint, lemongrass. And these are herbs which 
many Jamaicans are familiar with because you know that the rosemary is good for the hair as it darkens and it gets rid of dandruff. The peppermint cleanses the scalp and allows your hair to grow faster and the, the sorrel adds body and luster to your hair. So from all of my herbs, you're getting good benefit. I, I do plant my herbs, however, if it's not enough, I would have to go out and purchase from other farmers. At Herbu Enterprise, we believe in buying Jamaican products that will build Jamaica. As that's what we are doing, we are using Jamaican products, Jamaican herbs to make Jamaican products. It has been tested by the Scientific Research Council of Jamaica and they validated our herbs and from report that we got, our product is 100% natural and it's 100% safe as you can also consume our product but it won't taste so good so <laughs> please don't. Uh, it's very sustainable as that was what persons were using before we had the artificial products coming in. The soap, the hair oil, even the sh shampoo, the body wash. You know, all of those things can come from herbs as that's where they came from initially. So why not go back to the herbs? And you know, you have all these chemically loaded products which are not good for your health. I talked to cosmetologists, hairdressers. I talked to all of those persons and get their feedback just to get an insight of what customers are facing, facing and what they actually need. And from talking to them, I realized that, you know, persons are moving from chemically based cosmetics that has like even sulfur, paraben, lye, sodium lauryl sulfate, all of those chemicals they are not good, they are not even healthy to use on your skin. So in talking to those persons these are the reviews that we are getting. So we say hey let's use the Jamaican herbs that we have right here and make our own cosmetics. We don't need to be importing these number of cosmetics that we don't even understand the ingredients. So even one of my aim as a young entrepreneur having this herbal cosmetics company is to educate my customers, allow them to know that what they are using in their hair. If they take up a herbu, say they take up a herbu cosmetics product, they can know that say this, I know what's in there. This is made from aloe vera, this is made from lemon, this is made from sorrel. So they actually know what they are using instead of taking up a product you ask them, what is sodium benzoate? Only if you're a scientist, you might even know that. We have other follow-on products such as the body wash, the lotion, the hair oil coming on. There's a lot of work that we need to do and that we want to do because Herbu is not only um, concentrated with hair, but the whole body, the whole being. So even though it's Herbu Cosmetics, you might even see us opening a health food store. So. You never know. That's just some things in the pipeline. A herb boo. You know, we, when people talk about herbs, they, they, it's usually something unattractive. So for our company, we want persons to have a sexy look on herbs. So we got, came up with a sexy name, herb boo shampoo. Herb boo cosmetics can be found in pharmacies island wide. And we hope to export soon to other countries around the world. Here in my... Herbal Kitchen, I'm going to show you how to make a simple facial scrub from ingredients that you can find in your garden. So here I have the aloe vera, the leaf of life, and I just blend the leaf of life here with a little bit of baking soda and the aloe vera. I just blend it before I came here. Now we have the cornmeal. The cornmeal helps to get rid of the blackhead and the aloe vera actually helps to get rid of the dead cells on your skin. Now we're going to make a facial scrub. So we'll be pouring our leaf of life that we blend with the what with some water into the cornmeal and we just mix that a little bit just to get it to be evenly distributed. And we're going to add our aloe vera and the baking soda that helps with exfoliation. And you can see it looking slimy. Yes, that's aloe vera. Aloe vera helps to remove the dead cells on the skin. And it's also good for men when you finish shaving, you can apply some of the aloe vera just to get rid of the, 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 the razor bumps. Yes, it's looking good. Get it all in there.
All right, now that everything is together, what I want you to do when you're trying this at home, just to rinse your face with some water, just to get rid of any debris that's on your face or dust particle. And then you, you would apply this facial scrub to your face. It is rolling. Uh... Yes, now we're going to apply the mixture to our assistant's face. You want to start with like the cheek and just massage it in. And just get it all in. Or oh, one thing that you could do as well, you know, you could add some other herbal shampoo to it. Because it gives a nice cool refreshing feeling. And she should be able to feel some exfoliating taking place on her, her, sc her skin. I usually add some of the herbal shampoo as it has some menthol in there. So it gives a cool refreshing feeling on the scalp. On the skin, sorry, the face. Just watch her expression when I apply the herbal. <laughs> and after applying this you just allow it to stay for just about a minute and then you rinse off your face and you, you can continue this throughout the week for two times two times per week and you'll see results within a month and that is the facial scrub made right here in the herbal kitchen i hope you try it and tell us how it goes coming up learn to plant your own kitchen garden in our do-it-yourself section what better way to secure your food supply and to save money than by growing your own kitchen garden in an island blessed with sunshine and the occasional showers it's not hard to do more to come in our DIY section after the break. Most of us aren't that far removed from our agrarian heritage, especially if we come from rural Jamaica, otherwise known as country. So it's not really strange to see large plots of land dedicated to farming. Our DIY project is a kitchen garden, and as the name suggests, a garden for the kitchen. Typical crops for kitchen gardening are usually short-term items that are always used in the kitchen, such as peppers, tomatoes, escallions, and herbs. While most seeds can be purchased at your local farm store, the most sustainable way to populate your kitchen garden is by saving the seeds from everyday meal preparation. Seeds can be gathered, dried, or sprouted. Plants like callaloo and escallions can be regenerated by leftover cuttings. Ensure the site has ample space for what you will be planting. Also, it must be well-drained and fertile. If necessary, you may have to introduce topsoil to the area, especially if the area is close to the house or in an urban area. Step 4. Planting Water your garden area thoroughly one day before you begin to plant and sow your seeds according to package directions. Planting space and depth is critical, so don't crowd too many seeds into one space, but remember to sow extra seeds in each row in anticipation of failed germination. When the seedlings sprout and develop, second or third set of the true leaves, thin them out, but keep the strongest plants. Do this while the seedlings are still small so that you don't disturb the roots of the remaining plants. 
Take the necessary precautions to protect your garden from pests. The most common culprits are snails and slugs. In another episode, we will explore organic solutions to control these pests. Fertilizers Go organic. Set up a compost heap with organic scraps from your kitchen to have a ready supply of natural fertilizer. And give your plants tender loving care. Studies show that singing and talking to your plants in a nice way encourages healthy plant growth. That's it for your DIY section. For more tips on kitchen gardens, check out the list of sites below. So that's it for this episode of Green Radar. Tune in next week for news, projects, and trends in green living. Before we go, here's our bite of the week. On our way to Waterloo Primary School, we passed this sign. Not wanting to speculate, we asked one of the locals about its origin. Whenever anybody come over the hill, you know, the guys call speak, they say, come down. That's why, that's why, that's why they gave me. That's why they gave me.